Hello and welcome back to the seventh tutorial on writing your own operating system. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, before we start with the mouse, uh, let me show you around a little bit. Um, so last time I only had uh, the case for an A, for reading an, the letter A from the keyboard. And uh, in the meantime, I, um, yeah, I added a lot of other cases, right? So, um, and uh, I also added this uh, uh, the static Boolean uh, shift. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, if the shift key is pressed and I press an A, then I'll write a uh, capital A and otherwise uh, non-capital A, a lowercase a. And um, yeah, some other stuff. So um, these uh, cases here, case 2x, uh, 0x 2a and 0x uh, 3, 6, these are the left and right shift keys, right? So and, and if you press one of them, this boolean is set to true. And these are the release codes. If you uh, release these keys, then shift is set back to false, okay? And uh, also, I've I have moved um, here this test if the key uh, is is a release key into the default state, right? So because um, otherwise we would never get the release codes for the shift uh, key, and that is not really what we want, right? So um, so one thing um, if we uh, if we say make run, we will, because of this, we will get a lot of these warnings here. And I'm a bit uh, unnerved by this, uh, and I'm a bit annoyed by this. So um, I'll just copy this uh, W of write strings and paste it in the um, make file as an additional uh, parameter to GCC, but uh, W no write strings, okay? So if I make clean and make run again, now um, all these warnings are just gone, okay? So, okay. Now, now actually uh, I can do hello youtube.com. Okay, so uh, that's uh, what I did for the uh, between the last video and this one. Um, now, in this video, we will talk about uh, the mouse, and yeah, after we have done the keyboard already, the mouse is really easy because it's almost the same uh, what we have to do. Um, just one thing. Um, in the communication with the mouse, you will, um, if if something happens, um, then, I mean, if you, if you move the mouse, if you press a key uh, on the mouse, uh, a button, um, you will get three different uh, bytes from the mouse, and you need all of them. So um, what I have done is I have, uh, uh, I will uh, put an array with three bytes in there. And uh, have an offset uh, running uh, over this array, and uh, when you get a byte, it will write uh, the received byte to the offset, and then move the offset to the next step. And when uh, when you are through, so if if the transmission is complete, then it looks at this uh, whole byte, uh, this these three bytes, and uh, and calls uh, and, and acts on that in a way, okay? Um, one problem that I um, that I ran into multiple times actually already is uh, that this offset doesn't start at zero. Um, and I honestly don't know why. Um, and it's, it's also not the case that it must start at one or it must start at two. I'm actually not sure where it must start. 
just what I can tell you is if your mouse doesn't behave correctly, you probably have to change the offset. It just has to be a number between 0, 1, and 2. And uh, if the mouse behaves odd, the first thing you should try is change the offset between these three values. Um, I really don't know why this is the case. Maybe when we uh, when we turn on the mouse, maybe we should uh, reset it in some ta in some way to tell it to start at zero again. But I don't know. So uh, the quick and dirty uh, hackish solution is just fiddle with the initial value for this offset. So. Um, So what I will do now is, I told you this, uh, um, since the mouse is so similar to the, uh, to the keyboard, I'll just copy and paste the keyboard files, especially for the, uh, for the header file. Um, Okay. Um, now, before I forget that, I'll put this also here and in the kernel. like this. Um, <laughs> so we, um, we again have an 8-bit data port, command port. Um, then I'll have this uh, three byte buffer. And this will um, always store the last um, state of the buttons um, because the transmission from the mouse will always uh, give us the current state. And to to see if a button has been pressed, we have to uh, to compare the current state to the last state and then uh, update the last state. Okay. Okay, this is all we have to do for mouse.h. Okay, this stuff can go away. Okay, so the interrupt handler um, works on the interrupt 0x2c, but also but uses the same data port and command port. So uh, we can leave it like this. Um, this we activate the mouse uh, commands then we again we get the current state of the uh, pick um, and we uh, set the second bit to true like this and write it back 
again like this. Okay. Okay, um, and we initialize maybe like this, maybe not. Uh, we will see. <laughs> okay, um, then in the handle interrupt, um, yeah, we read. The state is from the command port. And uh, we test whether the um, uh, whether there actually is data for us. So so only if uh, the st um, only if the sixth bit of the status is one, only then uh, um, only then there is actually data to read. Okay? And then uh, we will read that into the buffer at the current offset and then Then we move uh, the offset okay, like this. Now, um, if the transmission is complete, this is a case um, when we are through. You know, if the third uh, byte has been written, then um, this is a case when uh, the offset is zero now. Okay, so the next transmission would start at the at the beginning again. So. Um, So if the offset is zero now, then um, yeah, then we can uh, look at the buffer and um, yeah, bu buffer one is the um, uh, is the movement on the x axis and buffer two is the movement on the y axis, but uh, um, in the opposite direction than we would uh, we would think. So um, let me do the following. Um, so I could do something like um, static u and eight t x and y. Like this, and um, then here we would uh, do something like x uh, plus buffer one and y minus buffer two. So this would uh, so so now x and y would basically be something like a cursor. So the position of the mouse. Okay. So when you move the mouse, then uh, you you get the 
the change, so the uh, the movement, and uh, you have to um, to uh, add this to the current position to get the new current position. Okay. Um, so one thing I want to do now. Um, you know the video memory, right? So uh, we had that um, that it is at zero x b eight zero zero zero, right? And um, the first uh, we we um, we had um, separated this into an array of um, of u in sixteens, right? So I'll copy this uh, this here. And I want um, to um, to display the cursor on the screen now. So I'll take the same address here, and um, after I have moved the uh, the cursor at the new position, I want the cursor um, to switch the um, uh, the colors. Around from the uh, from the character that is there, you know. So if this is a video memory, right? So um, we had this uh, separation into 16-bit integers, and the first um, byte of every uh, of these characters. So here is their character uh, in the second byte of this pair, and the first character is. Um, is a pair again of one of uh, uh, it is one byte and the first four bits are for the foreground and the last four bits are for the background color. And if we want to change to to flip um, the the color, we will just take the low four bits of this byte and copy them here, and uh, take the low the high four bits and copy them here. Okay. So um, that effectively um, flips the color of the position where the mouse is. Okay. So um, and actually, I will initialize uh, the mouse in the center of the screen at forty twelve. Okay. Um, so what I will do now is uh, video memory. 80 times y plus x, as we did before. Um. So let's first take the high um, four bits like this and shift them to the right four bits so they are now the uh, the low bits of the new um, byte then we'll take the low bits and shift them to the left four bits. And the last two, um, the last eight bits will stay the same, like this. Okay? Now, this is um, what happens after we've moved uh, the cursor. So, um, what is the case before we have moved the cursor? The the old position of x and y is already flipped, and we want to flip that back. So before we uh, set the new cursor, so we'll just have the same thing here. Um, okay. And um, yeah, I will also put the same. Here in the constructor, um, like this. So, um, and now 
how the initial uh, so so um, at the startup I will flip uh, the um, the character in the center of the screen. because that's the initial position of the cursor. Okay, one more thing. Um, we don't want uh, the, the mouse to run out of the screen, right? Or if, if we move the mouse um, out of the screen, on the right, we don't want it to appear on the left one uh, line below, right? So we don't want to have that. So I'll just say if x is less than 0, then uh, we put it back to 0 so that it cannot run out of the left. And if, it's, uh, if it runs out of on the right, then we capture it back like this. And the same thing for y. Only with uh, 25, 24 here. Okay. So let's see. Um, just ignore this message. It tells you that uh, you don't have uh, pass through um, for the mouse. Modern operating systems have that, so they are more designed to work inside a virtual machine. So um, in, uh, on a modern operating system, you could just click on the screen, and the um, and virtual box would uh, would pass this into uh, the operating system. Um, here we cannot, we can't have that. So um, um, when we click into it, then VirtualBox captures uh, the mouse and um, uh, it will keep the mouse captured until we press the right control button. So um, now uh, the now VirtualBox has. Uh, has this captured, and of course it didn't work. Why should it? Okay, I found my mistake. <laughs> um, so uh, we didn't have the uh, interrupt set uh, for the mouse uh, interrupts. So the handle interrupt request like this. Um,
Okay, now it's yeah, it's okay. The the mouse is uh, running relatively fast. Uh, I don't like that so much, so, but uh, yeah, it, it does what it's supposed to. Um, so I'm actually happy about this now. Um, so um, okay. Um, Now let's see. Um, I want to uh, um, I, I want to look now if uh, the if a button has been pressed. Okay. So uh, as I said, uh, the buttons um, member will uh, store the old um, state of the buttons, and now we will compare the old state to the new states. Okay. So when we are finished, we will just copy uh, buffer zero, um, and here, if So here we uh, we move. Uh, so so this uh, this code uh, actually moves the uh, a bit. It, it gives us a uh, a single uh, a single byte uh, with the with a, a one at the ice position, and uh, we compare that to uh, the content of buffer zero. Okay. Um, and if that is different. From the old state, so different from buttons and zero x zero one shifted by i. Yeah, then uh, here you can do whatever you do when the ice button is uh, is pressed. So um yeah maybe maybe just uh why not uh invert the color again so that we can see something So uh when I press the button now then uh the uh the cursor disappears and when I release the button it reappears Okay, so um, yeah, so this is how you read the movement and uh, the button presses. Of course, uh, what I'm doing right now is really, uh, really bad design, right? I mean, uh, I mean, directly accessing uh, the video memory in the uh, in the handle interrupt uh, of a driver—that's really a bad idea, right? Uh, so. A more decent idea would be to have another class like keyboard handler or mouse handler, which just has um, uh, a method, a virtual method uh, on key pressed, on key released, on mouse moved, on uh, mouse button pressed, you know, these things. And then you would, uh, you would store a pointer to one of these instances in the, uh, in the driver and then, uh, then you would put this stupid, I mean, this nice interesting behavior, but, uh, you could move this out of the driver because it doesn't belong in the driver really, right? So, um, so, uh, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you can do that on your own and, um, uh, 
Yeah, I think this is uh, sufficient for today. Um, yeah, we really uh, went far already, didn't we? So I think uh, this isn't actually too bad uh, what we have reached now. So um, um, I mean, we can move, uh, we we can boot our operating system. We can write to the screen. We can. Uh, uh, we can receive interrupts, we set up the global descriptor table, we receive uh, keyboard buttons and mouse movements and everything. So um, I think in the next video I think I will uh, tidy up the project a bit so that it is ready for becoming bigger, you know. I will, um, I will have a, I will create a, a more uh, a more tidy uh, structure. You know, it's it's not exactly a good structure to uh, to have all the files here in one directory. You know, the object files, the CPP files, and the header files. Um, so I will make a a better directory structure, and um, and also I will uh, put the uh, put all the classes in namespaces, and uh, so that everything becomes more tidy and uh, um, because this is getting a bit cluttered right now and I think this is a good point to do this before we start with the, the uh, with the really uh, crazy stuff like network uh, communication and uh, graphics mode and desktop and uh, GUI framework and all the stuff so um, so yeah so uh, that's enough for today as I said next time Maybe you just skip the next video. Uh, as I said, I will just tidy up a little bit and um, the video after that, uh, we will start looking at uh, the peripheral uh, uh, component interface, the PCI, uh, through which you, uh, for example, access uh, your network chip and your graphics chip. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, what we will do next time. We will make a foundation for really uh, network communication and uh, graphics mode and uh, having a desktop and all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next videos. And uh, see you next time.